Are we live? Are we live? Can you all hear me? Are we live or did it not work? Hmm. Are we live? Hello, hello, hello. This is weird. Can you hear me but not see me? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, there we go. Can you hear me? Wow, this latency is weird. Latency. There we go. Uh, let's see if this works. See and hear. Um, ha ha, good, good. All right. How is everyone doing? Um, I can't see you guys and it's been a long time since I've been in front of the camera so it feels weird, different. Happy New Year. Happy belated Christmas to any of you I haven't talked to. Um, we've got the Hornet to unbox today, but something else just showed up this morning. The, uh, the follow by Edgy, and you've seen this uh, Joel playing with this over on 3D Printing Nerd. But I thought since this is the final retail packaging um, and also the, the ring light, I thought we could open that up and just see what it looks like as well. So let me see if I can get the chat up on my iPad so I can see and hear you or see you guys have iPad will travel my channel. There we go. Hello. All right, so I can see chat there on the iPad. Um, oh, the uh, the 2021 shades, um, Horizon 3D, that is on prusaprinters.org. When I looked on there yesterday, it was on the, the homepage trending, but if you just search for 2021, it should pop up. Uh, it's, it's fun. They're pretty quick print and they, you know, flat on the bed, no supports. Um, and they just snap together, the arms, three pieces, the arms snap on. Pretty cool. So how many people do we have in here right now? 64? Um, should we start off with the, uh, yeah, such latency. Let me see if I can lower that if it's not, if it's possible. Stream is healthy. Analytics stream settings. I uh, cannot change the latency once we're already going. Uh, it's set for normal. So we'll just have to work around that. So. Oh. 
We got Eddie Moser, we got Duo, we got Filament Frenzy. How is everyone? You all ready for the big night tomorrow night? Ready to kick 2020 in the butt and move on to 2021? Um, I think my take on it is I don't know if we're necessarily going to have a better year than 2020 has been. I mean, uh, let's face it, 2020 has been kind of a beast, but at least we know what to expect going into next year, right? I mean, it's, you know, we've kind of seen the playbook now and it's not going to take us by surprise. Um, so we'll see how it pans out. Um, first few months should be pretty telling for the rest of the year, but we shall see. Lip sync is off or, or are we, we good, Mike? Yeah, let's pop open the edgy first and we'll, and we'll get it out of the way. Maybe even play with it a little bit. Um, let me see if I can do this. Hang on. There we go. Um, is that a decent view there? So you can see the box. So the retail packaging on this, it just shows you the dimensions on the side, gives you their website, pretty standard fare. Foam on top and it comes with, it looks like the edgy device on this side. We'll pop that out. Comes with a, a holder. Now this is pretty cool. Um, it's a standard quarter 20 camera mount here. So you could attach any camera or you can use the, the phone holder if you wanted to use it for your, you know, for your own stream. And it comes with a charging cable. So it looks like this is just sort of a T-nut and it will slide into the top of the edgy like so. Tighten it down and you attach your phone or your, your other camera. Get it to the position you want. There's two USB ports on the back. There's a USB-C, which looks like it's used for charging, and the top USB, which is used for um, Hoochamanani, uh, which is actually used to power the light, or you could actually charge your phone or other device from that one. So let's turn it on. And I see the LED is on, so if you guys can see that from the top, I'm going to put that at that angle so you can see it. It's going to track my face. So if I step to the side, you can see it tracking in that direction. If I'm over here, it will track me over here. So the cool thing on this is that it has its own built-in AI and its own built-in camera. Why am I looking up at the ceiling? Uh, it has its own built-in AI and camera. So it's not attached to your phone using your data, sharing anything, doesn't require, you know, internet, cellular access or anything. Um, so you can use your phone for with whatever app you want, whether it's, it's Zoom or even just recording video. Um, so pretty handy. F oh, and it also has a uh, tripod mount on the bottom there. And then let's take a look at the light. Um, let's see. So the light and something else in the foam here. Ah, a light mount. Toss that guy out of the way. I'm not Joel, I'm not going to just throw it. So the light has, yeah, the, the cold shoe mount on the inside, also the quarter 20 if you used a stud, and it has a cold shoe mount on the bottom, so can just, I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, screw and style on the bottom. 
So we could put this in here. Slide it in. Tighten it down. And that'll plug into the top USB. And it's on and off and you can change the color of the light. Let's see if that shows up on the overhead there. Doesn't really show too much the color, but you can dim it or brighten it and change it to a wider light or more blue, I guess, depending on what you're trying to show. Put the camera mount inside that. And now your phone is centered in the light. And it's still on, so let's see if it follows me. Very cool. This is going to be fun to play with, especially for some of like the, the live build videos where we're maybe trying to move around the printer and get a little bit more interactive. Oh, let's see. We'll see you in a bit, Brian. Um, uh, Edgy is Edgy is actually the name of the company. The device is the follow. Um, however, the people involved in Edgy um, are the same people behind Surreya Tech and Pio Poly. Um, so Mark is, is one of the people involved with that company. Um, but it is a separate entity, a separate company from Surreya Tech. Let's see. Not good for gremlins. Uh, Eddie, enough people stream from their phone that this is a need? Absolutely. Um, the target for this isn't necessarily YouTube streaming. It's for people that are doing Zoom videos and Zoom presentations. So K through 12 teachers that are now teaching from home, they can kind of set up a virtual front of classroom, um, you know, using their phone um, or whatever device. Again, you can put any camera on here. You can put a DSLR on here if you wanted to. Um, it will move, I believe they said, up to seven pounds. So you can use it, you know, as long as the lens isn't too top heavy that it's going to topple. Um, you can use any camera to, to stream from, and you can use it for a Zoom call with your students. So, you know, a, a, an instructor that's teaching a science class can move around from beaker to beaker or whatever, so, you know, having things set up across the table. Um, so it seems to be pretty handy and pretty much targeted for the work from home audience. Yeah, it is cool. Um, I, I believe Edgy also has some plans um, for releasing some uh, additional products that use the same AI, but making it ex accessible for other things besides the follow. But the follow itself is really cool. Um, let's see. So I dig it. I like it. Yeah, he is also in the promo video, Jeff. That's correct. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, RCA Maniac. Um, it is really cool that it is a standalone device that it has its own AI. I mean, there it's and it's using a camera. It's not using audio to track you. Um, from what I've been told on the AI, if there's multiple faces in the picture, at least with current software, uh, if there's multiple faces, it tracks the largest one. Um, so it'll it'll track the largest moving object. So, well, I guess should we move on to this guy? This is the artillery hornet, which I'm not sure if this is shipping yet. There's been a few reviews out on YouTube on it. Um, I'm not sure if it's shipping yet or if it's still pre-release. Uh, Artillery's website still showed it as a pre-order, so I'm not sure on that. Um, 
Well, I guess we'll have to see when it comes out or becomes more available. I, I wasn't expecting this until sometime after the first of the year, so I was really surprised when it showed up. Um, so I figured we'd try to squeeze it in for 2020 and you know, go out, go out with a bang, at least get it opened up and put together. And yeah, I think we're caught up mostly on chat there. So let's see what we can do. Um, I'm going to use the shenanigans knife here. And we'll use that to open the box. There's uh, enough tape on this to wrap an entire tree's worth of presents, I think. So this is Artillery's latest, and my understanding of it is it's a, a Bowden printer, um, as opposed to their previous ones that have all been direct drive. And it has a, a unique feature um, on the cabling. And we'll try to take a look at that closer. Let's see if we can go back over there. So top layer of our traditional foam. Uh, ooh, don't, don't, oh, OK. What do we have inside? Looks like a spool holder, a parts and tool bag, printed documentation for the artillery Hornet. We've got a checklist which has a 17 point QC. Um, I'm actually gonna read through these because this is pretty cool. You don't see this often. So appearance, scratches, movement, uh, X, Y, Z, carriage moves smoothly. Hardware is pulley and coupler fixed properly. FFC connected pro correctly, part cooling fan shroud, X carriage cover. Movement, five stepper motor works properly, dry run. Fans work properly, dry run. Heat bed heats up correctly, dry run. Print head heats up correctly, dry run. Print head bed is flat within test print area. No layering issues during test print. LED lights up and color is correct. Control from TFT. Filament runout sensor works correctly. Dry run. Power fail resume feature works correctly. Test print. Printer prints correctly. And tool bag cables packed. Pretty cool. Um, I know I know Prusa does checklists like this, but you don't see too many other manufacturers doing it. So. Uh, hopefully it's not just, uh, you know, red stamped. It's hopefully it uh, actually, the QC actually lives up to that. Um, yeah, do This is the one with the, the socketed cable. So we'll, we'll pull this out first here. And let me see if I can switch over to this. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Bear with this camera. This is the little side camera, but hopefully it'll allow us. So this is your cable that goes between the two. Um, and it has the a Bowden tube down the middle of it. I mean it's it's fixed in there. It's, it doesn't really move, but the it's aircraft style connectors with the Bowden tube through it. Now, from what I understand, this should be fine because of the way that the tube attaches at the hot end and, and the other side. So um, unless you're running a lot of abrasive filaments through there, you shouldn't really have any problems with this. And, and you can see the, the close up of the end there. So it's all one integrated thing. So 
let's go back to there. So we've got this guy, we've got the tool bag, spool holder, which looks to be injection molded, piece of foam, okay, safe landing. Let's see what this is. This looks to be the extruder packaged separately and independently. And I'm just gonna rip the bag. This is pretty cool. Um, let's go back over to the other camera here. So there's the top of your extruder cart and you can see the aircraft style connector with the Bowden goes down the middle. You got your hot and cooling fan at the front. Uh, it's recessed, but it's not protected. And then you have two parts cooling fans at the side. And the whole thing is an injection molded case um, or cover. And it looks like just screws at the top there holding it together. Inside you have the, the heat sink and it uses two screws to drop the, the hot end. Um, so you don't have to really worry about trying to tighten that in or out. And it looks like a PC board uh, for the other pieces. And it is an odd pointy shaped nozzle there. Let's see if that'll focus. So I'm not sure what the threading on that is gonna be. I uh, would have to pop it out and look, but, and that's a, a metal bracket. So that's very, very interesting. Um, then on the side, there's four, these four guys, which I believe are LEDs. Um, I could be wrong. Um, uh, maybe those are, never mind. Those might just be holding the, the fan in. Maybe not LEDs, but. Either way, very, very interesting design. Let's see if you guys... Yeah, Loyal Moses, is that you back there I hear behind me? Heard somebody's kind of scratching. Eddie, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I haven't looked at it. You might be able to, once that straightens out a little bit and loosens up, the Bowden may pull straight through. Um, I don't know. With the, with the bend on it, it felt pretty tight, like it wasn't going to slide out. So um, it, it, we'll, we'll find out, you know, one way or the other down the road. Uh, and, yes, Brian, no sock. Um Let's see. I don't believe artillery is here tonight. I didn't really let them know I'd be streaming. And we have some little bit of stringing in here. So let's pull this top piece out. Which looks to be our upper carriage. And Notice zip tied so that this doesn't move, which is kind of nice. Um, it looks like an artillery branded clone Titan extruder here. And all metal pieces for everything else. Uh, we've got three wheels with a single adjustment point on the bottom wheel there the three wheels and three wheels each of those has a single eccentric nut there so that's good and it looks like there is built-in tensioning here for the uh, for the x-axis belt that is integrated in that will be interesting to play with and see if it loosens up or if it actually holds position 
or slips. Uh, mechanical end stop. All right, so let's set that aside and power cord. Foam running out of places to throw it. Do not remove before finish assembly. Okay. And here we have the bumblebee. Nothing else in the box. There goes the garage door. There's our bumblebee. So, and it looks like the screws are already in there. Um, so it looks like it's, what, four screws to attach that? There. We'll see. Yellow plastic cover, odd choice. Um, I I wouldn't necessarily call it odd, Mitch. I would just say it's you know it's <clears throat> nobody else has done it yet, so why not? Um, it's kind of actually not bad. Uh, let's take a look at this. I mean, this is all injection molded plastic. The It's a smaller, like Ender 3 size bed, um, a small touchscreen with a full SD card, reset button, and the knob. Let's take a look underneath at the electronics and the framing here. So it is all extruded frame for the support pieces, with the exception of these. The, uh, the control box and stuff is injection molded here, and the front piece is injection molded, which those sh really shouldn't be structural um, because you do have the crossbar, you know, across here attaching the pieces. So those are more just keeping it aligned. I can't tell. There may be another piece of extrusion going across inside here, but I can't tell without taking it apart. I don't really care to do that right now if I don't need to. And my switch is actually set for 110 volts. Um, and it did say on the box, if we can see this, let's see if that will come into focus. It does show you that they actually preset it to 220 or 110 and pick the plug that they ship with it for US or Europe or UK or whatnot. So that's nice. Uh, Brian, no, it's not a touchscreen. It's a Marlin, um, at least from what I've seen, it's a standard Marlin screen, just a tiny one. It, in fact, I can look at the back of it here. It is a mini 12864 panel, so uh, it shows it right there that you won't be able to read, but on the back. And the quality of the injection molding is actually fairly nice. I mean, there's not a lot of flashing on it. Um, looks like it's securely attached. Cables coming out the side are standard cables. So really our only proprietary thing for lack of better words is going to be this guy. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll find out how much trouble that is or not as we play with it. Yeah, Eddie, it does look, um, that's a good point. It does look like it's much safer. I'm not going to do it today, but, you know, I will try to do some ground measurements to um, d d to see if the frame uh, is properly grounded and stuff, even though it's enclosed in plastic. Um, I actually kind of want to want to look into that to figure out 
because it's isolated from, from your table or from your ground on, on the plastic and the, the insulated pieces, um, I want to double check on what the grounding you know, should be for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fans under the bed. Um, well, there's no, f I'm not sure what you mean by fans under the bed for the print or for the uh, equipment. There's one on the back there. And that is pretty much the only fan for the, uh, the electrical equipment aside from the one built into the power supply. Um, sure, we can go through the firmware later once we get it all put together and powered up. Yeah, yeah DeWalt printer. Um, I don't want to comment on the price yet, Juan, because I haven't, it's pre released right now, and we haven't seen it show up on Amazon um, or, or seen you know, how it's going to look on the competitive market. So it. it if it sells on Amazon for the, if it sells on Amazon for the price that the pre-release pre is, it's it's definitely up there, um, for the size and, and what the printer is. If if uh, you know if they if they drop the price, um, wrong camera. There we go. If they drop the price down on Amazon or other places for sale, I think it'll it'll be more reasonable. Um, one thing I, I did not see on that hot end carriage, which I would have liked, but it's not necessarily needed for a printer this size, um, would have been auto leveling, uh, a BL touch. And there's no extra header ports like the X1 or the Genius had to be able to connect that. So. That is one thing I would have liked to, to have seen on here. Walt printer, yep. Um, Duo, is that what uh, Banggood is, is showing? Are they showing it as shipping though, or are they showing it as a pre-release? That's where it was a little bit confusing because I wasn't sure if this was actually out in the wild um, and going to customers or not yet. Oh, uh, bed leveling knobs. They are just your standard four leveling knobs, the, the large size ones, uh, two in the front and two in the back. It's a, not a three-point leveling, but it's a standard four-point mechanical end stop, the usual. So let's set that there, and let's see what's in the tool bag here. Got some wrenches, some screwdrivers, USB cable. We'll set those aside. A couple of zip ties, a couple of extra wheels, a actually fairly decent looking micro SD card reader, and a micro SD, which it is a Four gig, um, unbranded memory card. So it's the micro SD and the SD adapter. And there's an extra nozzle um, in here. Let's see what the threading is. They also give you this guy. Nice so SD card on the back, USB on the front. That's kind of kind of nice. It's blue. I like it because it's blue. Hi, Mackie. Banguga also says pre-sale. Eddie, yeah, I agree. That's that's a steep price, but we'll we'll see where it, you know, where it ends up on the market once it's out. Um, it could be one of those situations where they're they're aiming high and settle for less. Uh, and it looks like. In fact, the bed is flagged as 110 volt QC passed, and it looks like the bed has the traditional um, screen on top of it, on the glass. Which actually, 
I don't know if this is AC or DC bed. Without ripping that open and looking, so. Let's see what we have inside here. The product warranty, covered by limited warranty, overall provisions, intellectual property, uh, disclaimers. Dear customer, thank you for buying. Assembly, assign the gantry to the notch on the base, then fix the gantry to the base with four pieces of M525 pre-installed in the base. Slide the spool holder into the groove on the base as shown. Okay, let's start there. This is gonna be fun. to rotate this this way. I'll get you guys the top down view. We're gonna find the appropriate size driver. Which looks to be that guy. Power's on the back, so it's going to go this way. Just going to get those two started. We'll kilter it this way. Sorry, you guys can't see the back, but I'm trying to get it off the bench here a little bit so I can get to the screws underneath. started. Good. Now I'm going to get it up like this. All four snug. Brian, thanks for looking at that. I wasn't sure. Um, I would hope at this size it would not be an AC bed, but. Josh, hey, thanks for popping in, dude. Haven't seen you around in a while. How you doing? All right, that's four. And looking at the bottom of the bed that I can see here, which you guys probably won't, but it's labeled as plus and minus. So I'm going to assume that that is DC at that point. All right, flip it over. 
we'll connect up all these fun little connectors. That guy's going to go there. So this is a funky looking connector. Um, let's see if I can show this to you on this camera. So that's the connector that goes from the control box up to the side of the cart here, which is going to carry everything over to the, uh, from the extruder over. It's, it's not a bad connector, but it's just unusual, but it definitely, I think is going to be better than the ribbon connectors. There we go. So that is going to connect there. We have a the motor cable which goes up which connects here. And then we'll snap those two wires. One, two. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm going to check the wheels feel good on both the cart and on this guy. And I'm going to feel these guys down here. And the tension seems to be set correctly on all of those. So let's go over to the here and let's figure out how this cart goes on this guy um, looks like there's three screws that are going to hold it on so let's see if we can find those because I didn't see them in any of the packaging anywhere ah here we go they were in the bag with the tools as well as an extra piece of Bowden tube here, this black Bowden tube, which goes down inside here, I'm guessing, if needed, or that's for the extruder. Yeah, that's for this side of the extruder. Okay. That's for a filament guide. So, this on here, we'll get the center one. Hey, thanks, Brian. Happy New Year to you too, bud. Yeah, sorry guys about the lag. It's uh, it's set for normal latency, but I probably should have gone uh, with lower. This and the Ender 3, ooh, that's a tough one. Um, my Ender 3 is not really an Ender 3 anymore. That has kind of turned into um, a play platform for me. Uh, it's got a beta hot end and some beta control board and a bunch of other stuff on it that's been tested. But um, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so we have this guy who looks like there is a groove on there. So it just pushes in. Oh, and something just disconnected on my 
computer. Ah, okay. It was the iPhone that was charging from it. Okay, one side done. Where is the ring? All right, that is everybody in that guy on there. Now let's look at that belt tension and make sure it's good. It's funny, they've got the tension on this guy. It's actually very tight. Um, oh, because it goes underneath. That's why I'm looking at it upside down. But there is not really any tension adjustment for... Oh, there is. Um... If you're able to see that, let me swap cameras again here. There we go. I can't really zoom that camera, but there is two elongated slots here for the front idler for the uh, Y tension. So you can actually loosen those up, push on it to create your tension. So they do have built-in tension for both belts. That is pretty nice. The Everything is pr pretty much it. I mean, it's four bolts um, on the gantry. Let's, might as well go through and double check that everything is tight on the frame since we're in there, that nothing loosened up. And we're set. Um, actually, you know what, let me, I'm going to put you guys on hold for a minute, let you talk to amongst yourselves, just for a minute while I grab an open IEC cord. Uh, stand by, please.
There goes something falling down. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, supper's going to scroll off. Okay, there we go. So, the reason I like to use my own IEC cords, but more specifically, what I wanted was this little adapter here. Um, these are Alexa powered, but they, um, they have an on off button on it. So if for some reason the switch doesn't work on a new printer or whatever, I can tap this to kill power without having to yank the cord. But let's plug it in. Plug it in. Let's actually get this off the bed. Dinner time. Brian, you can't eat dinner. A couple other stickers up here on the front. Let's get those guys off. Those are a little gummy. I don't like that they stuck these on the bed because now the bed is all gummy. That's not kosher. Whoa, Eddie, when did I miss that? Happy holidays to you too, man. I thank you very much. I was not, I did not see that come up. Thank you, man. I hope you and your family also have the best holidays and you get some time with the little ones. Wow, I did not see that. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I missed that. Oh, we got the delayed reaction, right? And yes, Windex. Um, for these, any cubic style beds, I like to use Windex on them at first, uh, followed by IPA. And those stickers don't really want to come off. Um, because for some reason, early prints don't like to seem to like to stick to them very well. And let's roll this back. Spool holder just snaps on here somewhere. I guess you can roll it wherever you want to. So let's try a little IPA on it now. <laughs> Eddie. Okay, I caught that one in real time, or at least real time as it popped up on my screen. Dude, Eddie, thank you. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. That is going to be a nice taco dinner. Um, like steak tacos and maybe fish tacos for the wife. Damn. Thank you, Eddie. Let's, let's see if we can... Um, You've, you've gotten yourself the first print off this thing. Seen a little, oh my God. Eddie, that dude, that is too much. I, thank you, Eddie. I'll, 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 I'll talk with you later. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that. Damn, Eddie, thank you. Um, all right, Eddie, you get the, the first print off this thing. No matter what it looks like, it's yours. And I think this one wheel is slipping just a little bit. I felt the wobble there. Um, all right, I'm flustered. That doesn't, that doesn't happen often. It, it takes an Eddie to make that happen. 
Um. Sorry, Shane, you're the one with the stripper pole. I can't steal that one from you. Okay, that wheel's just a little bit loose. Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Wait a minute! <sighs> Loyal, I'm sorry. I thought that third one came in from Hetty. Uh, oh. All right. I, I, I'm, yeah, I, I am flustered now. Loyal, thank you. I, I'll, I'll be talking to you later, too. Thank you. Um, both you and Eddie is very much appreciated. That's going to be some very nice tacos for New Year's. Oh, Eddie. Um, shoot. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have to get the whole cow from from loyal now eddie thank you this printer's never going to get built at this rate huh um okay that wheel looks good let's see if we can power this guy on here Survey says. Oh, wow. Yeah, non fam, that, that is more than a week of tacos. That's going to be alternating street tacos to soft tacos to hard tacos to other tacos. Okay. We should have power here. There we go. I did not get that on. And, and, and we're going to have Choco Tacos. Um, Loyal, we need to get some Choco Tacos up to you. I know Eddie can get Choco Tacos um, where he's at, but... Oh my gosh, guys, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm... I don't know what to say. Let's let's see if we can get rotate this this way. Let me see if I can get get yeah, a shot here of that front do hickey. Okay, let me see what I got here. Well, it's not quite straight. Let's pull that up. We're going to set that on top of there. And I'm going to, I wish that would focus. Hang on, let me see if I can get that to focus. Okay, that, let's see if we can get this over to you. Okay, so that's going to be the Brio. There we go. So there's our LCD. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Josh. I just saw your text. <sighs> Loyal, Eddie. Oh my gosh. I can't keep up with you guys. Thank you. Nick. Thank you, Nick. Uh, you, 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 none of you guys needed to do that, but thank you. In fact, I've got some treats here from Nick. Um, these uh, keep my keep my throat going. 
Oh, now Karen's throwing down with the sticker. Thank you, Karen. Um, my gosh, I, I thank all of you guys. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm flustered. Um, thank you, all of you. Let's. Uh, Let's kick this camera over and, and get you this view that I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. The, the light reflecting off this surface causes this camera to pulse sometimes. So I'm sorry that happens. Um, because it asked about the LCD. So there's our LCD. So let's play around in our menu. I'm going to suck on one of these licorices that the, uh, the Dime Lowe's sent me. Um, get, my, get my throat wet. Shane, a, a producer, yeah. Um, so it's, oh, here we go. Can, can we peel this or is it stuck behind the thing? Can we get it? Can we get it? There we go. The peel. Okay, um, so it's our standard Marlin interface, but tiny. I mean, it's you know pinky sized uh, for scale. So info screen, motion. We have main axis, auto home, bed leveling, disable steppers. Pretty much our standard Marlin stuff. No media. Under, there is one thing here, LCD contrast, which we can change that contrast. We can see that screen changing. And I thought there was a way to thought there was a way to, to set some LEDs on this ring. Let's see if that's in the manual here. Uh, manual's like 40 pages, so I'm not going to go through and read all of it. Ah, 21 pages of English, and then it goes into what looks to be German. So it is English and German. Oh, well, we'll figure out the LEDs later. Let's do an auto home and make sure everything works. That is something that's kind of different on this that I find interesting. The X-Min is on the right, so it homes to this side. Let's tilt this guy up, get you a look there. It homes to this side rather than the traditional on the left. Um, it is single, single Z rod, which comes down from the tops of the steppers at the top, and it's free floating at the bottom, which is also kind of different. Normally, that would be going up. I'm not sure what their reasons are for doing that. Well, thank you guys again. I, I'm I'm. I just don't know what to say. I can't. I can't even scroll the chat here anymore. Um, it won't. It won't scroll. I just. Um, oh, Brian, there are no LEDs. Okay. Um, thanks for thanks for chiming in. I forgot you did one of these already. So, filament here will feed up into here. So let's um, let's disable our steppers after homing and let's get this thing leveled. Disable our steppers.
Good thing I can do this from the back. Is that camera angle okay? Uh, you get to see the massive mess of the garage behind me. And I don't know if you guys will hear it, but somebody fired up a rather loud motorcycle behind me. Let's see if we can get this. Okay, so our, our goal for tonight, right, is to see if we can do this without any injuries and actually have a successful first print. So we can say that um, we, we topped Joel. That's, that's our goal, right? Let's see here. Scroll this up here. I think, uh, Eddie, I think Shane is protected. I don't think you can time him out. I'm getting there. These things are tight. since we've manually leveled. <laughs> loyal. So who is V, Loyal? Thank you. But who is V? Is... is uh, for victory over over the over the system okay 
we're getting close. That's a little low. My dad just added a credit card to my account. <laughs> oh, we have the entire Moses family in here. Things are about to get dangerous. Very loyal. There we go. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Um Road Gump Shield. Um no. No, not yet, not yet. I mean I I haven't had to show any leg or anything and nobody's asked me to take my jacket off yet, so I think we're still good. I, I think my uh, integrity is still intact. I think these springs on this are going to take a little bit of time to break in because every time I roll it from front to back, it starts to bottom out, even after setting it fairly high. I'm going to get this probably just a little bit high and then eyeball it in as we start a print. That's starting to rub there. I'm also trying to watch chat and do this sideways, so I'm sorry it's taking so long. Um, you no, know, I don't have eight points to level, but we want to get it close. And I don't like this piece of paper. Let's see if we can find something else a little bit better. Maybe this one. Okay, rippy sounds. The um, bed is in any cubic style um, coated glass. It's very similar to what they used to use on uh, ceramic cooktops on electric stoves. Practical Playboy, nice. Uh, let's see, we're getting there. 
I wish manufacturers would go to three-point leveling. That would be so nice. Oh no, I'm not I'm not going over over to Twitch. That's the dark side. Same, same, uh, same old Shane not only has a pole, he's also got a switch. I mean, a, uh, a switch. Uh, a swing. Uh, there's gifts of him all over the internet. Just look for Fat Santa, and they come right up. Call that good enough. Let's move access. Move Z. Move ten millimeters. And we're gonna take this up a couple of inches or so. Well it moves really quickly. And fairly quietly. Let's take that. Let's load filament. Set it for PLA. And we've got a roll of black filament one. Let's see if that shows up. Black filament one, the uh, Pro Select. This is from one of the Profi boxes. And I figured their filament spools are kind of wide, so I like to use them when first testing a printer to see if they actually fit on the spool. Going crazy for the wild mane. It is definitely time for a haircut or, or several hairs cut. Okay, let's see if we can get this in. So it's not pulling my filament, but it is spinning. Let's see if I can get you guys just a little bit higher there. So it is a Titan style extruder. Um, let's see if I can get a better cut on this or a better angle get it in. I tried to do the load but it sat there and did a grind on me. What are you talking about Nick? You've always had a blue spanner. 
Just don't let Karen know that she has one too. There we go, I think. Is that in? I cannot get it to hit that where that Bowden tube goes down into here. I can't get it to hit the hole. So let's see if we can get a little bit better. Angle on that tip. I'm going to power this off. I'm going to pull this out. Have a look, see. Hmm. Well, that might be the problem. Let me see if I can get you guys a shot of this. So this is not here is both where the Bowden goes through and this point. If you can see it there, the there's a gasket and it's basically it's off centered. So there's no straight path through there. So I need to loosen this up make a clear path through there and see if we can get it back going again. So I'm going to hand loosen this. I'm going to pull this filament out, or down at least. Yeah, I don't, Eddie, I didn't want to take the cable out while it was powered up, though, because that's got all the power for the hot end, you know. Okay, so if I put that down through there like that, and now I tighten it up. In a perfect world, my filament should feed up through there. Okay. Let's try this a different way. I don't want to lose that end. All right, so far Joel's winning as far as uh, things actually working, darn it. Let's loosen that up. We're going to put, remember there was that piece of Bowden tube in there. I'm going to grab this. 
put that in there as a guide point. Let me grab my poker thingy, my longer one. I do not remember what printer this thing came with. I actually have two of them. I don't remember which one either of them came with. But got these two awesome poker thingies. Um, one of them shaped like a hook. The other one is actually a stainless steel like this, slightly larger diameter. So if I were to take this, put it down through, maybe use that as a guide. Like so. And of course, drop that other piece. Um, use that. Then I should be able to tighten it up. Right? And. Yeah, I use the, the checklist to level my bed as well. Um. I don't want to fault them for this because this could have happened in shipping very, very easily. And I just dropped, there it is. Um, Yes, about the, the hook, if it was metal, yes. Um, I don't remember what printer that came with. It might have been my original, uh, like, duplicator DI3 back in the day. Uh, yeah, okay, Brian. Yeah, the Wan Hao. Uh, Samey same, I think. The, that's what mine was, was the Wan Hao DI3. Which was a good printer once upon a time. It was the, I think, the kind of like one of the original hack to hack to run printers. All right, this does not. Oops, a daisy. Having problems getting it in the hole. My hands are too big. What I'm doing, there's a small piece of PTFE guide tube that goes on the bottom of the extruder here, and I knocked it out trying to get the poker through. And trying to get it back in the hole is pain in the butt. AC plugs weren't treated all the way. What, Eddie? So speaking of Z-Stepper, um, it it's, was an odd choice, I think, for them to do a top-down Z-Stepper. I'm 
Not sure I understand why they chose to go that route. This does not want to fit in the hole. Bizarre. Okay, well, that's not urgent. We don't need that. I'll deal with that later. Um, the hole here is a little bit too tight for me to get this into. So we'll deal with that later. We just need to get the filament from the bottom to the top. It's like I want to stick a fish tape through here almost. Okay. I can get it from the top to the bottom. That works. Uh, no, Brian, it, they tend to fall apart in water, unfortunately. Brian, did you have any problems um, with this part of the process? Uh, Oh, I guess not. Not one of your issues. The, the PTFE is already removed. So, I mean, I can go from the top down. After I realign that, I can go from the top down just fine. See? It's getting it to go the other direction. It just doesn't want to go. And, unfortunately, I don't have my my heat gun in here to try to to go to try to do that. get a little more tension on this. There has to be a trick to this and maybe after the first few times it goes through it'll be a bit easier. Actually let me try going at it from this direction. There we go.
Okay, now that we have that out, I can slide this bad boy over the top. Get the connector in. Cinch it down. And I'll have to go back and put that little piece of PTFE guide there. Boom, there it is. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's. Let's say this thing is very back heavy. It's not a lightweight printer. Let's see if I can get a good angle of a falling camera. Camera down, man down. There we go. All right, we're in. Now, we are going to cheat. We are going to cheat at this point because I have Magigoo and I'm not afraid to use it. The reason I'm doing this is these type of uh, any cubic beds don't always seem to stick even with the w using Windex and IPA. They don't always seem to stick on their first few prints. So let's make sure it does stick. All right, now we can take a look at our SD card. Here. And I'm not even gonna, just gonna pop it in the printer. Media inserted. Oh, we're gonna have to load the filament again, aren't we? Okay, let's try this again. Duo. All right, um, we're back on track. I got that through. I need to add this. So the 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 note there was that if this ship if this doesn't line up, this connector doesn't line up, um, you lose your path through here. The filament hits the bottom of the the connector and doesn't make it up into this bone tube. So that has to line up. Um, it might have been as simple as adding a note to the manual to watch out for that, basically saying use a poker, um, uh, like a poker or, you know, something of that nature um, before screwing this on. Use that, push it through, slide your Bowden tube over it, and then, you know, screw it down and screw it on and tighten it up and make sure that you have that path before going through this. So. Um, See, Shane, I'm ignoring you because you can't even spell my name right. So that comment doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm not going to call foul on that guy yet. I'm just going to call it. Maybe it should be a little bit better documented. And we've got extrusion. The If the tube inside of here is not replaceable, um, I'm not keen on that. It would be much nicer if it was slightly undersized and, and you could get it out. Um, I, I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know if it's, if it's glued in there, if it's just tight because the cable's not stretched and hasn't been moved at all. So questions I can, I can put back to artillery. 
what might be nice if that was, that was a floating cable, like slightly thinner diameter, or I'm sorry, not cable, but uh, Bowden tube, the PTFE, was slightly thinner diameter, like the nozzle liner used by, uh, or put out by um, cap tubes, so that you could, you know, pull it through and, and replace it as necessary. Um, while I don't see it being necessarily a point of failure, if you did break filament off inside of there or something and it got stuck and you needed to jam it out with a coat hanger, of all things, or something, it could be kind of a pain in the butt. So it's a question to take back to him. Bugman's here. Nick, how are you? Thank you, Shane. That's it. Extrusion. Yep. So we are heated. So let's see what's on our SD card. That's similar to like the Prusa does. When you tell it to load filament, it raises up a little bit, extrudes, and then goes back down to where it was. So I'm reading this upside down. Um, I, a personal preference, I'm not a fan of the nozzle rotation direction. Left or counterclockwise is up, clockwise is down. Um, Okay, we have a cube and we have dehornet config. Um, so let's run the cube. All right, so the question here is, uh, who gets the cube? Eddie or Loyal Moses? Um, Either or, who wants the cube? Josh, I, I mean, there, there's, there's a thing there for you too, though, that if they do say this is a, um, a it is the way it is and that the tube is permanently impregnated in there. Um, th these are fairly off, fairly off the shelf aircraft connectors. You could always make your own aftermarket one uh, using cap tubes and stuff and, and you've got an aftermarket product. Ray, how are you? Happy New Year, bud. Good to see you in here. Let's see what this does, and I'm ready to hit the adjustment on here if we didn't get it quite level. Land. Do you have a tune menu? And they do have Baby Sub Z enabled, so. It is Marlin 2.0, uh, some branch of it. Uh, nothing stopping me from printing two cubes at the same time. Other than I, I like to print what's on the SD card to give it a whirl first. No. Um, I could certainly print two of them. Two of them later. So let's see. Let's see if I can pull the comments over here in front of me and... See if we can have a conversation while we do this. Um, <clears throat> Josh, yeah, I saw that too. Um, but I, I, I still question that because knowing, knowing who answered the question on Twitter, you know, wasn't um, wasn't necessarily the engineer or something like that. And I. When, it, when an answer to a question comes from marketing um, and not support or engineering, I, I don't want to say that I don't trust the answer, but I always second guess it. So I, I would rather ask it a second time. Um, but 
Tom, have you had any problem with your cable? Um, did you have any of the issues lining it up like I did here? Ooh, Mad Monkey's here. All right, so the bed is going to 70. Wow. We have a purse line. There we go. Sorry guys, there is no zoom on this camera. It's just a little Logitech Brio. Um, so there should autofocus on it, but there is no zoom or anything. I can't get you really in any closer unless I move it. Eddie, that's a fair point. I mean, they've, they've, I think they've tried to do some innovative things like with the ribbon cable and with this, and there, there are things that sound great in theory. Um, when they come out in ex actual execution, I, I think the, the longevity of it isn't necessarily there. Um, so I don't know, we'll have to see. I mean, it's gonna take some time. I don't plan on reviewing this right away. It's, it's you know, it's going to be a while. It's gonna get some put through its paces and I want to see how long this is going to hold up um, before, it, before it needs to be replaced. And artillery logo cube, yep. Yeah, it, uh, it it is very quiet. Uh, it is printing. It's fairly quiet. I'm right next to it with the laugh. Let's see. Here is the power supply fan. I can't even actually hear this back one. Other than that, it's pretty much perfectly silent. It's a very quiet little bugger. Um, I do wish there was a little bit more strain relief. Let me see if I can pull this around and get you guys a little bit of a tour here. Sorry for the, the quick movements. Um, so there is no strain relief on this and I wish there was, there, I mean, there is a, there's a clamp and a, a little cover here, but I wish there was something keeping that constrained like that. Um, honestly, even if it was a piece of nylon or, or, or something stiff inside of this, uh, tubing that went into there, um, or a piece of PTFE tube that just kept that a little bit more, more rigid. Everything else seems to do okay. I have no concerns about the injection molded stuff. Let's see if we can get that in there. It's still... Kind of hard to see in there there.
All right. Well, I mean, that's that's it. It's printing. Uh, you guys have any questions while we wait for this to, to see what it's going to do? Um, Josh, that's not going to happen. I mean, I can, you know, give a little, little unzip. But that, that's about all Shane's getting out of me. Um, there we go. Is that, is that better with the mic? Uh, sorry, I just caught that one. Trying to read back through. Let's see. Um, yeah, the, this is easy enough to fix. I mean, it's it's not ideal, but it's it's a very easy fix, and it's something I think if we if we point out and mention it to them, I'm sure they'll they'll have a 3D printed part on the next version, or even possibly before it ships. Again, as we said earlier in the stream, I'm not positive if this is considered pre-production, um, or if they're actually shipping these. Oh, thank you, Loyal. Um, it's kind of cold to remove the jacket. I'm going to freeze. All right. There we go. We'll, we'll, we'll take off the f filament one hoodie. And we'll go to the Proto Prosta shirt. How's that? Is that better? Less less jacket rub. Um, still sticking, still going. Ten minutes in. Oh, ten percent in. I think hard to read that upside down. Nick, yes, she actually told me where she was hiding them. Um, I told her you were probably going to be on the stream, so she let me have them for throat candy for this instance. So she she knows, she approved. Again, she thanks you very much for sending that stuff. She's really enjoying it, like daily. I'm only worth a dollar. Oh. California gets cold. Yeah, California, well, cold is relative, right? I mean, it is 21 degrees Celsius in the garage here. Um, so that's, what, about 74-ish, I'm guessing. But I've got two printers back behind the cameras that are running over there, heating the place up. Um, I mean, this guy's not generating much heat, but... It's, it was four degrees Celsius outside last night, and I don't know what it'll drop to tonight, but I mean, it dropped down to about 14 in the garage. Uh, can I speed it up with a spin of the knob? I probably can. Do you guys want me to speed it up, or do you want to see how it comes out El Naturel? It's up to you guys. you guys want to see should I should I put it on high speed or should we just let it go yeah it's cold there Nick and yeah it's it's all relative. I mean, I'm I'm also wearing shorts and flip flops, so my my upper half is is chilly. My lower half is nice and warm. But it's it's relative. When you're used to being in the in the 80s outside every day, the 70s and 60s is cold. Uh, 
There's one, one vote for, for speeding it up. Loyal, Eddie, it's up to you guys. Right extruder, left extruder, you guys tell me. This one for natural first. Quality, crank. How is it adhered already? Um, it's, it's holding really well. Full speed, let's see what it can do. Um, five degrees Celsius, only singles. No. All right, loyal says slow. We'll leave it slow. We're at 14-ish percent. Let's see. Let me see if I can do this. If I pick it up while it's printing, turn that like that. I don't know if that's even readable. Or not. Martini, see, that's exactly what I'm saying. It, it's, it's all relative, right? I mean, I'm... I, I'm in shorts and slippers too, so it's. I we go from we go from Pearl City to Milani, and it's the temperature drops, and and you start getting ice cubes in your beard. It's five degrees makes a huge difference if you're not used to it. Right, we are letting it run. <laughs> Nick, I'm glad you guys liked them. Um, I, I was telling Nick that there are uh, those are seasonal, so we'll have some different ones in spring. Let's see. I don't have a um I don't have a magnifying glass I could stick in front of there. I had hoped this screen and you could see it around the, the ring here maybe. Um I'd hope this had the, the lights built in. The um this particular model screen, I've got another one. They they have backlights so that you could actually trigger um LEDs inside this ring with g-code or set it via the lcd and i'd actually worked with scott uh from marlin on getting the g-code working for that um if this is the the fc setsy display inside there uh but we'd worked on getting the g-code working for that so we could you know change it from the lcd or uh, we could send it make it to red or blue or green you know as part of like your startup scripts as your temperatures change and stuff and um i was hopeful that's what was inside here but We'll have to pop it off and see. That looks to be a little bit more than 18%. Maybe that's 18 minutes. Brian, is this literally just a cube with rounded corners or, or is there some trick to it somewhere?
Hey, Loyal, uh, just don't don't tell Sean that I took off my jacket. Otherwise, I can't ever give him crud for that again. This is going to go. It's, I mean, uh, looks like it's about 40 percent. I'm kind of intrigued by the choice to put the the Z stepper at the top with the the downward. Um, with the downward rod, I don't necessarily know the logic to that because uh, you still have the spacer and everything up here. So it's one place or the other you end up with, um, you know, with rod. RCA man twenty five. Yeah, we don't we don't talk about that one. It wasn't a complaint, it was it was a tease. Shane, Sean Sean. Not Sean, but Sean. Definitely Sean. Nick, yeah, we, we know. We tried. We tried. That's correct, Ray. The original G-Max did do that. I'd almost forgotten about that. Um, I, I still don't understand why they did that. I don't get it. Okay, I'm gonna move this box out of the way before I trip on it. Ouch! Ooh, table saw hurts. Any more? I need a bigger garage. Um, if we had our way, let's see if I can show this over here. This would be the default print that sliced and comes on the SD card with every artillery, modeled by uh, our Bugman 140 himself. Um, but they didn't seem to show much interest in it, so. Yeah, who knows? We're just over halfway there. It looks like it's been about 22 minutes, so we're probably looking at another 20 minutes to finish it based on that math. Um, so we'll see what see what happens. Yeah, this was a really each one of these you. Can, can't really see it, but they, it's hard to get that in there. Every one of these is an independent tower. They all, all come up off the space independently, independent spires. Really cool model.
But Eddie, it should be able to print it, right? So here's a question with the with the edgy follow. Um, if I were to put some googly eyes on here, on the front of this thing, and make a face there, uh, think the edgy follow would would track it and follow it as it goes back and forth across the bed. It could be fun to try. Lycanth, yeah, you said crank it, but uh, there were more votes for, for keep it slow. It's not like anybody's in a hurry to get 2020 over or anything. Oh, we could um, we could test the power fail. Does uh, anyone want to test power fail? I don't believe this has out of filament detection. I don't see a sensor on it, but unless it's built into this thing somehow somewhere uh, that I'm not seeing, but I don't think so. All right, 400%. Let's do it. Hundred and thirty. Let's go to 200%. 200%. Oh, Brian does not have power fail resume. I thought that said that on the QC checklist. Uh, let's see. Number 14, filament runout sensor works correctly dry run. Number 15, power fail resume feature works correctly test print. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I need a pen. I need a pen. Power fail 14. So these all pass QC, yet they're not features on this printer. Um, thanks, Brian. That was a really good point. I did not realized that it didn't have that and I'm going to yeah the checklist said it so um, that's going to be some questions to go back to artillery about that how come it's stamped on the checklist or on the checklist uh, if it doesn't exist Interesting. Okay, so tune. So that's 200%. Take it up another 100. Taking it up a notch.
that's 300 percent I'm gonna bump the nozzle up five degrees before taking it up any five stamps to standard huh Yeah, but you guys wanted to see 400%, so what do you want, 400% or pull the plug? Go 400, then pull the plug. Okay, we are at 400%. Which I think we're hitting the, um, I think we're hitting the speed limits because it doesn't feel like it's actually going any faster. Um, I don't think there's enough room for it to accelerate into those speeds. Eddie Moser wants to see something on fire. Uh, okay, well that's theoretical 400% there. What do you think? Pull the cord. Pull the cord, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up, thumbs down, you guys tell me. Uh, I'm not hitting the power supply voltage while it's live and printing. You kidding? Uh, I, I like my other equipment in, in the garage, not the burn. Eddie says pull it. Tom says pull it. Mike says as long as it's not orange smoke. Brian says, put your finger on the switch and flip it off. Lots of thumbs ups, lots of thumbs up, no thumbs down. All right, let's try this way. Get ready, I'm about to, to make your Alexas do things. Alexa, turn off the genius. There we go. Yeah, I stole the, stole the cord from the genius. Alexa, turn on the genius. And what do we have? Marlin 2.0.7.2. Artillery Hornet Red. No resume. No power recovery. So now we know. So let's move this off here. We already pulled it, Shane. You missed it. Uh, let's see if we can get... I can't get that any closer. You can definitely see where we kicked up the speeds, though. Well, that was entertaining.
No smoke, no fire. Menu item for recovery. Um, I don't believe so. Not in the not in the root directory. Randy, no. So yeah, it's not on the product page, but it is on the the QC checklist. So um, that gives me some questions to take back to artillery and ask them. Um, I mean, who knows? The explanation could be we verified that it wasn't on the printer. Check. We didn't say it worked. We verified it wasn't on the printer. Um, yeah, got the Alexa right there. Got the Google Home over there. The Google Home is not, not as fun as the Alexa. Um, and I've got all the printers, the, the X1, the Sidewinder, the Prusas, they're all on, um, they're all on the same little dongle. So I can just say, turn on the printer, turn off the printer and, uh, kill them. So. Well, it is. 620 ish here so we've been going for two a little over two hours uh, uh loyal your faith and checklist should be reduced by three there were three items on this checklist that don't exist that said they did uh, g5 code to my start script to enable power resume Ah, uh, maybe there, maybe it has the the Marlin soft power feature. That could be something to look at. Uh, definitely some questions to to ask. So. Well, I mean, the other thing I, 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 I can say, too, is that, again, is I don't know if these are pre-production yet or if these are um, actually as shipping or, or going to ship. So questions I can ask. To be honest, they could have used the checklist for the either the Genius or the X1, and, and those categories would have applied. Um, so it's possible they didn't just didn't print a new checklist, you know, for these guys and just arbitrarily stamped step to those ones um it definitely involves uh you know further further questions and stuff to ask so but anyway we've been going a, about two and a half hours just under two and a half hours after joel's marathon stream um i think i want to call it okay eddie you can say i told you so I'm saying jury's still out and being fair and impartial, but you can say I told you so, and, and uh, you can say it again when I find out that my pair, fair and impartial is wrong. How's that? But I've got to be fair and impartial. Um, yeah, pre-production checklist. Maybe that's the case. Anyway, my tummy's grumbly, and um, I could use a trip to the little boys' room. So I think we should, should call it. Um, thanks everybody that's still with us and still here after all the hell that 2020 has brought to everyone uh, thank you to everybody in the community that has been so giving this year to, to, to everybody that's needed a hand when they were down or just needed an uplift um, uh, loyal Eddie thank you guys tonight for being so giving and thank you for everything that you guys have done for the community and everyone out there um, the, we, we've got some some sour apples in this community like anyone else but it, it's 2020 has been a great year and there's been a lot of people banding together to help when when people really needed it and that's that's been really uplifting to see um, I think 2020 is going to be a stronger year for all of us, and I, I hope, uh, you know, hope to see you all in January and at 
hopefully at Murph. Uh, who knows, maybe we can get Loyal off the ranch long enough to get him out to Indiana for Murph. Uh, that, that would 